feel like my grade isn't changed. Well, I haven't like updated grades, you know, for like two days or something like that. So, um, so Shah Jahan, he is going to be a way better ruler than his father, uh, Aranz, but not Aranz, Aranz was his son, than his father Jahangir. Um, remember Jahangir, he was a bad warrior, so he lost a lot of territory. We're going to have Shah Jahan reconquering that territory that he lost. Uh, Ar Ar I keep on saying Aranz, I'm sorry. Uh, Jahangir, he was a bad ruler. He liked to party hardy all the time and not rule so much. So um, where the government had kind of failed, and he had gone and um, he gone and brought back that stability. He wound up going and having the government be strong again. Um, you know, he had the divisions. He had made sure good um, people that were not corrupt were inside of government positions. And he was uh, relatively peaceful. He manages to uh, quell some of the uh, difficulties between the Sikhs and the um, and the Mughals, the rulers. Uh, and one of the great things that he winds up doing is increasing trade a ton, bringing a lot of wealth to India. Uh, one of the things, so he's bringing in all of this extra wealth to India, which is really good, really fantastic. Um, he's conquering land, which of course is great for the Mughals, not so great for the people being conquered. Um, but, and he's going and patronizing the arts a ton, uh, which those are all positive things, but those are all expensive things. So one of the downsides of Shah Jahan is he's going to raise taxes tremendously to be able to pay for this. Um, so gone are Akbar, Akbar's um, reforms for going and improving the tax system. Uh, some people were taxed like near 100% near of the things that they would produce. Uh, people had to work a lot. It was not um, entirely a fair system. Uh, and it's tough because India was made more beautiful, more awesome for it, um, but, you know, of course, at a cost. The most important architectural building that, of course, Shah Jahan's going to be responsible for would be the Taj Mahal. Um, but he also did things like uh, the Peacock Throne, the Red Fort, and other great stuff. Uh, the Peacock Throne is really cool because it's, like, an incredibly fancy throne. Like, it is, like, jewel-encrusted. Like, you're sitting on it. There are diamonds and rubies and sapphires and all sorts of stuff on there. I'm sure you feel extremely fancy sitting on it. I don't know. I've never sat on a throne. One of you, I'm sure one day when you rule the world, will have a nice throne just like that. So, Shah Jahan really cleaned up a lot of what Jahangir had done. And I mean, he did it looking fantastic. So like I said, he was um, the person that had the Taj Mahal being built. The Taj Mahal is one of the world's most amazing buildings. It's incredible. Uh, we're going to see a really nice picture of it in a moment, and the picture does not super uh, do it justice. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be the most comfortable because, you know, you want some cushions and things, but you would feel important. And isn't that what it's really about? <laughs> so uh, here we see the Taj Mahal. Um, the Taj Mahal, and uh, you don't need to write this, but it's just an incredibly... Um, amazing building, which marries so many different architectural elements together, creating something really special. You know, we have the Ottoman domes. We have, you know, the Persian kind of intricate inlays. We see these beautiful arches in there. We see the symmetry. Like, everything is symmetrical. It's really just um, kind of breathtaking. Um, and as you get in close, you see that there's tons of, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I'm so glad, Roger, that you got to experience that. Um, tons of just beautiful intricate things uh raj says yeah that there's lots of water um the mughals were really big into having uh, what they called water gardens uh and this idea of kind of uh rest of relaxation of refreshment um and there's this really cool there's a, this legend of the black taj uh which really probably is with uh, the water features would be the reflection of the taj mahal and there although there are some people who are like searching trying to find this hidden like black marble taj mahal uh but that's probably just more of a legend than really it's the cool reflection on there um and this was a tomb for his favorite wife who died in childbirth we'll get to that slide in a second just um one of the cool things that the mughals like to do is they would put like gemstones like because like i said it was such a rich nation uh like in the ceiling so it's like sparkles in the light like the, you know the night sky this kind of amazingness 
uh, like that. And hundreds of thousands of people, like I believe, come here every day, like over 100,000 people each day visit the Taj Mahal, which is kind of incredible, um, just how many people. I'm sure it was pretty crowded when you went, right, Raj? I got abducted by mutant turkey, bummer. All right, so this was uh, the wife, uh, Mahal, who uh, is, that is her tomb. She died during childbirth. Now, this is going to take a ton of time to, um, to build. Um, and, you know, there's an apocryphal story that um, I was just told um, a lot of people don't believe um, that it came up after the fact um, that Shah Jahan uh, thought it was so beautiful that um, he never wanted his workers to create something as beautiful again, so he removed the hands. Uh, today, I was just told that um, that story is made up after the fact. I don't know. I would need to do some more research to find out um, if there is truth to the story or if people don't want to believe that uh, that is the truth. Is that a hand up, Joel, sir? Oh, okay, just like a stretch or something like that. Now, Shah Jahan winds up getting super duper sick. Like, everybody's like, man, Shah Jahan is going to die. And, of course, his sons were super excited about that. Isn't that crazy? His sons were super excited <laughs> that he was going to die. Um, uh, because they wanted to be the rulers. Uh, so, Aranzeb is going to be the wind up, who the one who winds up being successful from this. He's actually going to kill one of his brothers. I think he either imprisons or exiles the other brother. Um... And when Shah Jahan gets better, Aranzeb is not happy. I'm sure he's like, Daddy, you were supposed to die, which is not what you really want to be saying to your father. You want your father to be, you know, alive, hopefully. And um, so uh, in thanks, Aranzeb locked his daddy in the dungeon. Um, now he's at the dungeon of uh, the Agra Fort, where he could look from the tower and see the beautiful Taj Mahal where his favorite wife was buried. Um, and he's kept there for the rest of his life. So Aranzeb uh, takes the throne, and he is not going to be a good ruler. And it's a pretty, like, sad end for Shah Jahan, who, like, wound up creating, like, one of the most um, epic uh, creations ever. Um, there is some talk about how the, how the, um, the Taj Mahal might have actually been an existing uh, Hindu temple that was then repurposed and, like, had some architectural changes. Part of the support for that argument is that, um, you know, travelers going through India at this time didn't make any mention of the construction of the Taj Mahal or anything, which is kind of unique. Um, and then there's like cool things like um, I went down the really big rabbit hole about this. Uh, I think it was last year, maybe two years ago, where they're like there are these doors in the Taj Mahal that are never allowed to be opened. And they're like down in the ground and like all sorts of secrets um, are in there. Um, but I think probably it was built by Shah Jahan. It's one of those things that, um, people often like to come up with like crazy kind of theories about stuff. Like, you know, with the pyramids, you'll, if you go look, YouTube pyramids, you'll hear people be like, oh yes. And there were actually ancient power plants and kind of stuff where it's like, no, probably not. Especially because you'll hear some things like, oh, um, pyramids don't have hieroglyphics in it. And that's a sign that the Egyptians didn't build them and they're way older. But then, like, if you actually just take the moment to, like, Google hieroglyphs in the pyramids, you'd be like, oh, they are totally hieroglyphs. This person is lying. Which, once again, I want you to realize, always check your sources. People sometimes lie and don't tell you the truth. And you want to be better than those that just repeat things that they hear. And you want to be evil. That's my lesson for that. Okay. Let's look at some culture stuff. Art. Uh, so, we're going to see that... Um, and. I'm going to be honest, like, I'm not going to ask you questions about Mughal art. So this is more just for your edification rather than, <laughs> you don't have to um, do that. I mean, if you want to, you can. Um, so we're going to see that um, the Mughal art is going to be a blend, once again, of Indian and Persian styles. The Mughal culture is so cool just because it has so many different things coming into it. Uh, we see that it does not follow the prescription of typical Islamic art. Although the Mughals were Muslim, they had no problem having things from nature, having people and things. And usually it's vibrant and beautiful um, and pretty cool. Architecture. Once again, you don't have to write this kind of stuff down. Um, Mughal architecture might be my favorite. 
I mean, obviously, like, I like that classic Greco-Roman, but I think the Mughal stuff is just really quite, um, quite amazing. Just all of the intricate details, the inlays, uh, and symmetry. I love symmetry. Things being the same on both sides, like it could fold it like a book. The cool domes. It's just a really, really cool um, way of doing things. Uh, one of the things that I learned, um, so often, like, these, like, kind of things right here that you see, um those are like little holes inside of it and uh what it's almost like um a curtain and it keeps it cooler because then there's like a second area and it blocks some of the sunlight but lets some sunlight in that's uh pretty neat um like i said they use tons of gemstones in it thank you roger for sharing that. that's really cool um so uh yeah and shah jahan by the way he was buried um next to his wife afterwards after he died which is very nice of Aranzeb. i mean the least he can do after imprisoning his father for the rest of his life as a thank you for getting better right <laughs> um last slide just some moogle food once again you don't have to um look at this it is not vegetarian a lot of indian dishes are but moogle food typically is not it's nice and spicy um and actually a lot of the indian food that i prefer um is from the northern regions which would be primarily um kind of moogle inspired um, Indian food is like, I've, I think I've expressed this many times, it's my second favorite food, my first being sushi, um, but I love Indian. Indian is actually one of my daughter's favorite too. She like begs me for butter chicken. Um, <laughs> like, please, can we get butter chicken? Uh, which is awesome. Anyways, that is my notes for today, my cherubs. I'm stopping the recording. Do we have any questions about this?